Welcome back to Hard Run Boxed. It's that time of the month again. No, no, not not that time of the month. I'm talking about the time to discuss GPU pricing. We're inching a lot closer to the announcement of next generation graphics cards. Current rumors are suggesting that may happen in just a few months time. And I expect the current state of the market to heavily influence what GPU manufacturers can and will charge for new products. What's emerged over the last month or so is that MSRP level pricing is quickly becoming, or has already become, the norm for GPU shopping. The RTX 3090 Ti launched with an MSRP of $2000 and ever since launch it's not only as easy to get as other GPUs, but also priced exactly as the MSRP would suggest. Of course, that MSRP is a bit ridiculous given its performance increase over the RTX 3090 and the age of Nvidia's Ampere GPUs, but companies are at least no longer launching products only to see pricing drastically increase straight away. This has also been the case for AMD's new Radeon RX 6X50 series refresh, which Steve has just been reviewing on the channel with mixed results if I'm being extremely generous. All three new Radeon GPUs have hit the market at the MSRP, and there's no shortage of products to go around. If you want an RX 6650 XT right now, you'll be paying dead on $400 US. And similar for the $550 RX 6750 XT and $1100 RX 6950 XT. But like we said in the reviews of these cards, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to buy a refreshed GPU when the existing models are still available and are often cheaper. Take the egregious cash grab that is the RX 6750 XT as an example. Currently, as I said, you can buy one for $550 without issue. However, the RX 6700 XT is selling these days for just $490 US, which is only $10 above its launch MSRP and quite a decent price for this level of performance. The 6750 XT is just 5% faster on average at 1440p than the 6700 XT, yet current pricing has the new model 12% more expensive. That makes the new variant a bad deal and basically dead on arrival unless AMD and board partners decide to sell it for less than the MSRP just days after its launch, which seems pretty unlikely. While this isn't a good look for AMD's new refreshed GPUs, it doesn't really matter that much when buyers still have access to the 6700 XT. I don't know how long this will be the case, but there don't appear to be any stock issues with the 6700 XT. It's easy to get one, and you can simply ignore the 6750 XT. It'll only start to become problematic if the better value 6700 XT model is phased out from the market while the 50 XT model is still sold, and that's something we'll be keeping an eye on. On the retail market right now, the pricing trend is still looking positive. Last month, high-end cards like the RTX 3080 Ti effectively hit their MSRP and other models are edging closer with a few exceptions. The RTX 3090 appears to be stuck at $700 for now, while the RTX 3050 is also actually slightly more expensive today than it was last month. While these instances do limit the average price drop for May to just 6%, several cards saw price drops over 10%, which is more in line with the trend in prior months. However, price inflation is still an issue for most of Nvidia's lineup. From the RTX 3080 and down, on average Nvidia's GPUs are still sitting over 30% above their launch MSRP, with the 3060 Ti being a particularly bad example, though its MSRP is also the clear standout value choice if it were available at that level. It's a different story for AMD GPUs. Last month, a couple of models were selling at the MSRP. This month, it's the majority of their lineup. Basically, every model is currently sitting near the MSRP, with the exception of the 6800 series, which remains overpriced by 27%, though the price of these GPUs continues to fall and remain cheaper than Nvidia's equivalent models. Some GPUs saw price drops of as much as 15%, like we saw with the 6600 XT. What's excellent news for buyers is that several AMD GPUs are currently available for below their MSRP. The RX 6900 XT is selling for just $950 US, the 6600 XT is $5 below its $380 MSRP, and the much maligned RX 6500 XT is finally available for just $195. Unfortunately, the RX 6600 did get slightly more expensive, but overall I expect to keep seeing the occasional model be available below the MSRP depending on the month. Now while it is good news to see pricing for several models below the MSRP, and plenty of others at or very close to the MSRP, we have to remember these are old GPU series now and are set to be imminently replaced. Like I said last month, I think for high-end buyers, in particular these GPUs, even at MSRP, 
aren't a great deal. I certainly wouldn't want to be forking out $1,200 on an RTX 3080 Ti when that same amount of money in a few months could be getting me something much better. That's why cards like the recently released RTX 3090 Ti and RX 6950 XT aren't great buys at launch, and I wouldn't be all that interested in the $950 RX 6900 XT either, despite it being less than the MSRP right now. But for lower end shoppers, people after more budget and mainstream GPUs, I don't expect these cards to be replaced by new models anytime soon. From the time new high-end graphics card launch, you can expect to wait at least six months or more for affordable options to be available, or even more than a year like we saw with this current generation. If you typically purchase GPUs in the sub $400 range, the pricing today is relevant, it does matter, and if you don't want to wait another 12 months, there are some decent deals available today. There's a few other considerations here as well. There's question marks over how far GPU pricing can fall from here for cards that are already at the MSRP. I still think there's room for price drops for much of Nvidia's lineup, but we are starting to see prices stagnate for cards such as the RX 6600 from AMD. This makes it a better time to buy that sort of product now than in previous months, as there's a bit more price certainty and I think you can buy without the risk of another, say, 10% price drop next month. However, when new GPUs launch, it's common to see old cards begin to sell at a discount, at least in a normal market. So right around the time we start to see next-gen GPU announcements, it could be an even better time to buy. Here's how Nvidia and AMD's lineups compare to one another at the moment. Nvidia has been able to introduce a bit more competition at the high end compared to April. Last month we saw the RTX 3080 and RX 6900 XT go head to head. This month the 6900 XT's competitor is the slightly faster RTX 3080 12GB model. Previously we also saw the RX 6800 and RTX 3070 Ti compete at the same $800 price. This month, while both have come down in price, the 3070 Ti is now up to $60 cheaper compared to a $30 difference last month. In the mid-range, it's more favourable to AMD. Previously, the 6700 XT and RTX 3060 Ti went head-to-head -head in the $600 US category. Now the faster 6750 XT is going up against the 3060 Ti, although the 6700 XT looks better here. Then in the lower tiers, despite the addition of several new models, not a whole lot has changed in terms of positioning, and ideally both the RTX 3050 and RTX 3060 would be $50 to $100 cheaper. Moving on now to the used GPU market, whenever prices fall in the new market, used prices come down as well. And right now there appears to be plentiful supply, weaker demand than in the past year, and virtually no pressure from the cryptocurrency mining market, thanks to huge declines in mining profitability since the start of the year. All of this is combined into a bit of a buyer's market if you're looking at older models on eBay. Right now, Nvidia's RTX 20 series of GPUs are all selling for under their launch MSRPs for the first time, on average 28% under MSRP. This is on the back of a quite substantial 14% month-on-month decline in Turing GPU prices, which itself follows on from a 16% decline last month, 11% decline in March, and 13% decline in February. In fact, many Turing GPUs are now worth almost half what they were at the start of the year, which is a massive drop and great news for buyers. The G416 series is also in a much better position than several months ago, with cards selling on average at their launch MSRP and a price decline of 14% month on month. While not the best deal, Nvidia currently don't sell new GPUs below $300 in significant quantities, so the 16 series is still holding down the fort here, hence the level of pricing. The GTX 1660 is very favourable up against the RX 6500 XT in my opinion at $200, even if the difference comes down to used versus new, the 1660 is simply a far better GPU. The value of Pascal era cards continues to come down as well, and now most 10 series products are worth just half their launch price on the used market. A lot of these products are quite old now, and models like the GTX 1060 6GB, despite costing just $150, I don't think are suitable beyond use as a stopgap graphics card. The 1080 Ti is now competing with new RTX 3050s in terms of pricing, but without features like DLSS and, though not particularly usable, ray tracing as well. AMD's RX 5000 series has been extremely popular with miners due to their high mining efficiency relative to their gaming performance, but pricing has come down substantially since January. The 5700 XT was being sold for over $800 new at the start of the year, but you'll find them for around half that today, which is a large drop. 
Month on month, these products have come down in price by 16%, although pricing is still higher than the MSRP, so I wouldn't recommend them. As for older GPUs, it appears as though owners of 5-year-old AMD cards are flooding to eBay to offload them at the moment, especially models like the RX 590 and RX 580, which have seen drops of over 20% month on month. Despite this, these sorts of cards have typically been worse value than their NVIDIA competitors. For example, even today, the RX 580 8GB costs $200 used, compared to the GTX 1060 6GB at $160. I wouldn't recommend any of these models to buy outside of a short-term stopgap or alternative to the RX 6500 XT and 6400. So there you have it, another month of good news for the GPU market, with this trend continuing since the start of the year. Demand has fallen away as GPUs become more affordable, supply has improved substantially, and the massive drop in cryptocurrency mining profits has had a huge impact on the market. It cannot be overstated how closely mining and GPU prices were linked this generation, and how a reduction there has helped gamers get more affordable graphics cards. At the moment, we're in an odd position where some cards are starting to creep below MSRP on the retail market, but it doesn't feel like that's good enough. A lot of these GPUs are 18 months old, a new generation of much faster graphics cards is on the horizon, so just now hitting and falling below the MSRP doesn't really cut it. Especially for high-end models, I wouldn't want to be paying the MSRP knowing they'll be superseded before the end of the year, hopefully with much better price to performance ratios and new features. And there are still some high-end cards being sold for like 30% above the MSRP, so it's very difficult to recommend those models. We're also starting to see the price floor for some models. Cards like the RTX 3050 and RX 6600 haven't fallen in price much over the last month, and while they, I guess, could drop further in the coming weeks, who knows, there do appear to be some situations where lower prices in the future are no longer guaranteed. On the other hand, I expect pricing for other models like the RTX 3070 and 3060 to keep falling, so buying those products now isn't a great idea if you can wait. It's also quite clear that the used market has flipped quickly from a seller's market to a buyer's market. Unfortunately, if you have a card that you wanted to sell, you're looking at only getting half what you could have gotten at the start of the year or end of last year. But for buyers, there's good price pressure at the moment, and some cards like the GTX 1660 look like good buys against new products like the RX 6500 XT. Unfortunately, the time at which GPU pricing returns to normal also seems to be coinciding with the new generation of GPUs, which is going to create all sorts of havoc for pricing. But luckily, the current market conditions in terms of supply, demand, and mining are looking good, so I'm hopeful that the upcoming generation will be different to what we've just gone through. Anyway, that's it for this month's GPU pricing update. If you appreciate our GPU pricing analysis and want to support the channel, well, just subscribing to the channel is a good way to do that. But if you want to go beyond that and become a direct contributor to Hardware Unboxed and support us with a bit of cash here and there, then please do consider supporting us on Patreon or Floatplane. We have links below, and they'll give you access to a lot of bonus stuff, things like our Discord community, our monthly live streams, one of which will be coming up very shortly, and all sorts of good stuff like that. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.